Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Riverdale. A great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. It is interesting that we spend the entirety of the episode in Thornhill, and obviously see kind of across three different 65-year periods. Obviously, present day with Cheryl... Uh, 1957 with Poppy, and then 1892 with Abigail. Each one of their stories intertwined. Because present day, you have Cheryl reading a story to her Nana Rose, because it's like, right, going to move my Nana Rose into the afterlife or something like that. And you're like, what's that about? And she's like, right, I'm going to read about Poppy and Abigail's stories because they are intertwined. They are kind of the sad mirror images of each other. And it is this sad, tragic tale because... We know pieces to Abigail's story, but even this isn't continuous to. This isn't continuous to what she discovered about what Cheryl discovered about her um, ancestor Abigail in the um, traditional Riverdale canon, because this is Rivervale where things are different. It still could be applicable, but the way things play out, which we'll get to at the end, makes you. There, those elements make it seem like it still could be applicable, but we'll have to wait and see. I, I doubt it, but it's just like, it, it is its own continuity. It's doing its own thing. But essentially, Abigail uh, took in, you know, uh, essentially uh, a topaz of her own, um, which is kind of sweet to know, like, which also makes it even sadder that her and uh, Tony didn't work out just because of like Abigail's history and everything, you know, but I guess in like in another lifetime in another world in another way a blossom and a topaz find their way to each other. So I think it kind of works out in the celestial grand scheme of things, but nevertheless, um, Abigail had, uh, had welcomed her into her home, but also like she was all about teaching women well, because she wanted to teach the girls of the school, like, the rough realities of a world, kind of teach them things. But it's like, the way the world was, especially back then, wasn't the most welcoming place for a woman. Um, you couldn't, you know, a woman probably wasn't supposed to know certain things that would kind of challenge a male's position in the world. Uh, but... This experience did open up Abigail's eyes to want to say, right, I, that we need to prepare the women, these girls, like, you know, for the hardships of the world. But it's like, yeah, because eventually they'll be able to push forward into a world that will change their future, their children's future. Like, we need to prepare them for a future and arm them with what they need to find their way through the world into a world that, you know, hopefully changing the world into something that isn't what it is now that, you know. A woman doesn't have to necessarily be stifled type of situation. But it turns out Miss um, Topaz is actually on the run because she killed her husband. It was an arranged marriage situation and he was abusive and he tried to keep her in line um, anytime she stepped out of place. It's like, oh, you're a woman. Know your place. And she killed him, uh, you know, for that. But obviously Abigail wasn't willing to let her, um, you know, she's like, right, like, I understand why you did what you did, and I would do whatever it takes to protect you. But then, all of a sudden, someone from the war front, Finn, shows up with a letter from her brother. And I thought it was interesting, because in that moment, like, Miss Topaz and Finn locked eyes, and she was looking, and at first I was like, does she recognize him or something? But it's like, she sensed an air about him. But we get a letter saying that uh, James, her bro her uh, uh, Abigail's twin brother, died in war, which I'm like, man... It's kind of like Iron Man in the what if situation. It's like it seems like across the multiverse, Iron Man always dies, except for maybe one reality, but even then we don't know. But it seems like, man, he always kind of gets it in some shape or form. So I'm like, and this and it's like, man, like Jay uh her her brother, whatever his name may be in any continuity, whether it's Jason, whether it's James, never can survive candy. It's just like, oh. And particularly, it turns out he gets murdered again. That's like that's heartbreaking. Uh because this guy Finn shows up being like, yep. Your brother want me to marry him. Like, why would that be his last dying breath to be like, you know, sister, I love you so much. I want you to marry this guy. But, like, Miss Tobias wasn't, like, feeling that. She's like, something's about this guy. Like, I have a sixth sense for this type of stuff. Turns out home dude is not only a warlock, he's a serial killer because he's killing a whole bunch of people. And I was also wondering, I was like, did he kill? And it's like, yep, he killed her brother, too. Forged his signature and everything. I was like, 
I guess because he knows that the Blossoms are well off. I guess J uh, James talked about his family a little bit. So Finn was like, I wonder was he actually a soldier? Or I would assume he probably was, but he was just a serial killer and warlock on top of him, power obsessed. And getting like the... The, the home of the, a blossom and being wed into the family it's like oh like I it's all about power and prestige so that's what it symbolized for him so he forces Cheryl's hand and it's like oh yeah if you don't marry me I will kill the woman you love which the sad result is that despite Cheryl going through with it and she even references her um cause uh Cheryl go, well not Cheryl um Abigail references like, oh, did you hear about that situation with Lizzie Borden? And I was like, oh. It's like, oh, she killed a guy, her tormentors with an axe and proceeded to Lizzie Borden Finn. Granted, it didn't stick because he was still alive enough to curse her later on. It is the tragedy of like, despite everything she did, she didn't get to Miss Topaz in time because uh, she's gone. And I was like, that sucked. The bastard made sure, he's like, oh, she was a perfect victim. And I love he has the audacity to curse her. I'm like, you serial killer piece of crap, you're kill like you're cursing her because it's like, oh, because you got in the way of my ambitions and stuff like that. Yeah, come to bed and do your womanly duties and stuff like that. You're like, damn, dude. It's just like, you suck so much. I was like, you are such a garbage human being. And it's just like, and it's just like, yep, using the power of Bailey's comment, which is the uh, defining factor of this. Uh, it's one of the common factors amongst all three stories is because, once again, the 65 inter uh, intervals is when... Uh, Bailey's comic comes around and using the power from it he cursed it, her so like right you'll never find love and you'll basically all be alone and it's like he's like I'm a burning hill but I'm gonna make your life miserable uh, with my final breath I'm like god you piece of crap uh, I guess there's almost a speaking of the MCU I guess there's almost a little bit of a thing there should have gone for the head right um, but that's Abigail's tragic situation. Then we get Poppy's situation. Poppy very much like Abigail. I mean, that's what Thornhill always has represented is trying to uh, be there for women um, throughout these turbulent, especially in the turbulent times like that when women didn't have strong rights. So Poppy represented that for these women. Like anything they needed, she helped them. Like she gave Bitsy a... Um, a... Con um, contraceptive, uh, contraceptive like birth control, um, to, that way because it's like her, like her and her husband weren't in a good relationship, and it was a conversation of let's have a baby to make things better. Was kind of her husband Jack's opinion on things. Uh, there's certain aspects of yeah, this is its own continuity, but I think there are parallels that could be drawn in certain regards because they ended up having a kid together, and I was like, I don't know what their first child was, whether it was a boy or a girl. The second one was a girl, so I'm like. I was like, is that supposed to be Alice, considering they got Lily playing Bitsy? So I was like, because usually she plays the younger version of, like, the Cooper bloodline. So, like, when there was, like, a teenage version of her mom, uh, of Alice, uh, Lily played that role. So that's why I'm, like, wondering. Is it, cause, but Jughead's the dad, so that's why I'm like, Jug, well, Cole is playing Jack, so that's why I'm like, I don't know if that's supposed to be, like, a... Uh, um, foresight situation or is that supposed to be a cooper situation either way because i was about to say like if it ended up being like a force if it ended up being like a jughead's family situation it'd be interesting i, I think it's a it's a cooper situation because it never came up about because obviously coopers and the blossoms are related but that never came up in that conversation so i i don't know because if it is like a because it because um well because uh fp did say that he had a complicated relationship. Um, I kept saying Forsyth. I should have said Jones. I, I was going by their first name instead of like the, the um, last name. But um, he had a contentious relationship with his old man. And him, be, like Jack, being abusive the way he was, that's what made me think, like, oh, that might actually be um, FP's dad. Not unless it's like a thing of like FP. And, you, you, you know, I don't know. Like, I think they keep that vague enough. Because, like, once again, there's two children. I don't think FP... It's not to my recollection, neither him nor Alice have siblings. Once again, this is his own continuity, so don't get too wrapped up in the details and stuff like that, because it's just like, things are different in this world. Um, even uh, the Velma, Veronica equivalent, uh, she was, uh, her husband, who, interestingly enough, is Reggie uh, in this world, the equivalency of Reggie, um, like, she wanted to spice things up in the bedroom. Once again, it's just like, 
Abigail, I mean, uh, Poppy just purely served the purpose of, like, yeah, just giving women whatever they needed. Um, and there's also, because this is the 50s, late 50s, uh, this is teetering on, like, the red scare situation. Of, like, oh, who's a communist? Oh, so-and-so got arrested. But it's like, even bits of it's like, no, so-and-so, like, red, bled, red, white, and blue. Like, they were all about this country. Like, they'd never, like, betray it. But it is like, you know, it's just like, oh, so-and-so a communist? And they just immediately, like, run with that narrative, even amongst, like... You know, because, like, oh, Tammy also got help. It's like, oh, I want to make my husband sick so I can get the place. And I was like, timeline was like, would this be, this would have to be Pop Tate, wouldn't it? I was like, I don't think it's Pop Tate's um, father. Because if it was, like, we know about the soul um, selling situation because last episode. But I'm assuming that's supposed to be Pop. Well, we never, have we ever heard about Pop Tate's um, wife? I'm assuming that's what it was, but maybe it's just like, right, he's running the business, but I want to show that I can run the business. You know, it's the 50s and everything, too. So, you know, trying to she wanted to make him a little sick so she can actually run the business for a while because she I mean, much like Tabitha present day had her own ideas, continue to have her own ideas about how to expand pops. Same thing, kind of a, applicable in that regard. Um, but also like once again, the Alice equivalent uh, playing that certain aspect of like still keeping that Alice element of like oh like she's the one that's like oh like maybe so and so was this and that and Poppy was very open minded that she's like I'm not big into witch hunts um you know people being persecuted and stuff like that and judged so she's like people want to have a certain view behind their own closed doors I think that's fine as long as like you're not harming anyone it's all fine and dandy but Poppy was on I mean uh but um yeah the lady who's come you know it's um Machinomic, like, playing, like, this version of Alice being, like, oh, or equivalency of Alice, uh, being, like, oh, like, Poppy, I can't believe you have such views, like, are almost being, like, are you a commie? But, um, things get complicated for Poppy when, uh, her and Bitsy kiss. I was, like, y yo, I wasn't expecting that. But also, once again, it's a complicated thing, too, because it's, like, well, they are cousins. To be fair, there was the, uh, Polly and Jason thing, and they, you know, so it's, like, Maybe there's almost supposed to be equivalency and parallel in that regard. But the sad thing is, I guess, uh, well, the thing is, Jack never found out about Bitsy and and uh, Poppy. Because if he did, it would have been a whole other issue. But it's like, oh, you're trying to give my wife contraceptive so we can't have a baby? Like, yeah, get it, stay out of our relationship. And then they roll up later on with... Um, Kurt Keller and him and the boys in town are like, yo, stay away from our wives. That's why they didn't show up here. Like, if you cause problems, there's going to be a problem. And so Poppy didn't want to back down because, like, obviously Rivervale is her home and she won't be intimidated by, you know, anyone. Because it's like, you're already running amok, intimidating your wives. I won't be intimidated either. So she shows up at Pops and sits down. Granted, Kirk shows up with the cops. They're grabbing all of her stuff, even her family heirlooms, and they arrest her. And it's like, right, sign this conf uh, meeting that you're a commie, and once you do, we'll release you. I'm like, why would she do that? I mean, it's that, it's that once again, it's the witch hunt parallel of, like, admit that you're a witch, you know, and God will kind of save your soul. But it's like, oh, you'll be able to run free. But it's like, no, you'll still suffer the ramifications of being a commie. That'll be a whole thing in itself because you're damned if you do damned if you don't because she admits it she's labeled as a commie she's going to get that stigma she doesn't she's just going to be locked up because she's already got a stigma about her anyway and Bitsy comes to visit her just like sign the paper but she's like no my name is all I have that and my principles I won't give them up which you know Bitsy's like I thought you cared about me I mean well us and you know so you'd rather choose your principles over that which I'm like even if she was out, it's not like your relationship could ever be a thing, but I guess Bitsy saying, like, we could kind of have our affair, maybe. But for Poppy, it's like, no, I'm doing this for all women, not just us, all women kind, like, everyone going forward. Like, I'm doing this so our daughters and their daughters' daughters, like, all the future women never have to go through this. I'm fighting this fight for them. And Bitsy says some very hurtful things, but I guess it's like for her own sake and for Poppy's sake, it's like I'm cutting you off. I'm seeing the terrible things that I'm it's going to cut through you like a knife just because it's the only way like I can completely move on and just forget about you. It's just like I have to say these hurtful things because it's necessary or whether it's just because she's saying like, right, my husband was right. You're manipulating me trying to spin these thoughts in my head, you know, and it's heartbreaking. Cause, uh, cause at the same time, like Britta is listening in on this story, and she's like, "Whoa, like Abigail's situation, and then like Poppy's situation." So, because of the curse, 
Um, Abigail did spend the rest of her life alone. Poppy, she got released from jail when Jack came to her nine months later being like, yo, I need your help. I'm like, oh, you come crying to me now. Like, you did all this to keep me away from your wife. But the moment you need me, I come, you have to come running. And she's there uh, for the baby when it's uh, born. Um, trying to, you know, support Bitsy, like whether there could have ever been anything between her and them. And it seems like that's not the case. We'll get to that soon enough. But the moment she helps deliver the baby, they arrest her. It's like, wait, you said I wouldn't go back to jail. It was like, we pro we were, we did tell you that, but you're going to be basically bound to your property forever, never to leave. You're going to forever be on house arrest. And so she was stuck there at Thornhill left to haunt its halls. You know, like that's dumb. Once again, both of them got screwed over big time you're like man that that sucks it's like man there's just so much too much tragedy in the blossom family whether it's riverdale or rivervale uh but then we get our surprise appearance and it's i was like yeah uh to anyone that's curious i've re referenced it in the past couple episodes i've referenced it in other stuff this is a thing that I knew was happening this season that I got spoiled for me. Once again, it's like, it's literally in the trailers. Like, you come across the season six trailer for Riverdale, it literally says, Riverdale season six featuring Sabrina. Kieran and Shipka's like, is literally the thumbnail. So, like, you can't help but stumble across it. But it's like, I wish I didn't know. I'm so excited about it regardless, but I just wish I went into this not knowing that. But I was like, oh, she's like, oh, Sabrina, like, look who the uh, cat, black cat dragged in. Thanks for coming in. She's like, I don't be ridiculous. And it's like, oh, her and Cheryl are friends, which I think is funny. Uh, once again, the actress who plays Penelope uh, actually pop made a cameo appearance in um, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina because, like, um... Oh, God. Blackwood's daughter. I'm blanking on her character's name now. She's currently in, um, well, she was most recently in You. The actress was most recently in You, but I'm blanking on her character's name off the top of my head now. Because I remember Agatha and Dorcas, but I can't remember her character's name. Ah, uh, Prudence. Oh, my God. I love how I had to connect the dots backwards like that, but Prudence, right. Um... Disguised herself as, um, uh, used that form in, like, what was that, season, part three of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, so that's why I'm like, oh, there's an interesting, like, even deeper connection there to some extent, but it's like, yeah, referencing Cousin Ambrose and everything, but also, um, the long, I'm like, oh, the long blonde hair looks, oh, it looks really neat, um, I was like, oh, that's pretty dope, um, but uh, basically, we have like a transference thing going on. And I love that you like the twist of this episode. And this one, I honestly, I'm like, oh, it's a really good twist when it's like, right, we're here to enact a spell, a transference. Um, I'm going to take, it made it sound like, all right, I'm going to take Abigail's soul, which is still here. We're going to put in it, put in Nana Rose's body. Because at first I thought Nana Rose and Cheryl were switching. I was like, oh, like, so Nana Rose could have a young life again? What's going on? But then Abigail was in the body. I was like, wait, what? We'll get to that in a second. But I'm like, oh, they're giving Abigail this peaceful ending, you know? And um, and as Sabrina, Sabrina says, uh, happy, sad endings are the best, which there's layers to that, but we'll get to that in a second. I, I keep doing that, but... I love the reveal and the twist when she does eventually pass on because now she can finally be with her, her love after all this time. Well, it turns out there was never a Cheryl Blossom. There's Abigail was cursed by Finn to have immortality. So she was not only Abigail, she was also Poppy. And there was no such thing as Cheryl. Cheryl was the person she created. So that begs the that is so interesting because now that also adds context to why Poppy was like, oh, I don't like witch hunts. Because she wasn't just saying like in general, but it's also because she experienced one herself. She knows what a witch hunt is like. Uh, that's why I was also implicating, like, could the thing from Riverdale have happened when she was burned at a stake? She has immortality, so she could have survived it. Once again, it depends on your stance on immortality. Is it just you won't age and die? Which I'm assuming um, any means of trying to, like, hurt yourself. Like, it isn't you, you will heal from anything immortality. Like, kind of like you're indestructive. Uh, type in immortality because sometimes those two things are separate sometimes it can be the same thing one and the same immortality and invulnerability but um yeah like uh the only way she could ever die is if she had she had to have her soul transferred into a body that could actually die 
Begs the question, though, because it is Nana Rose, maybe in its continuity, she's not actually a Blossom. Maybe she was adopted by Abigail at some point in time. Like, she's probably one of the girls that grew up in this home that maybe, like, some, like, one of Poppy's, uh, one of the girls that was from Poppy's time frame, like, maybe something of that nature. So, because I was about to say, like, so how did, but it's like, yeah, they're probably not actually related. Just like she brought Britta in, it's probably a similar thing with the Nana Rose thing. So, Nana Rose now gets to live in Abig like Cheryl's body, but it's like Abigail's, and I was like, that's interesting. Um, but there's even that last line from, um, because there is no, like, the whole point was like, there is no death, and because even Sabrina was like, yeah, because even I died, and look, and I'm here, and I'm like, okay, I see what you're doing here, uh, but even like, you know, um, uh, there's no death for a witch because Miss Topaz was a witch. Obviously, Abigail was a witch. Um, and we know how their circumstances are. I mean, we even have, like, Hilda and Zelda as their circumstances. You know, like, being ageless, but also, like, anytime Hilda died, she could come back because of the graveyard. Uh, but there's no such thing as death for a witch, only transformation. I'm like, dude, you're being so coy while also being blunt about it, but I still, I'm, I'm loving the coyness of, of it and what it represents, but it is this happy, sad ending of like, you know, because even Joker said, it's like, oh, the 20-something year old Sabrina said it herself. Happy, sad endings are the best because Abigail and her love are reunited at the end, but the thing that really got me giddy about this and what I keep jumping around about is the, cre the person who, like, Sabrina... Chilling Embraces, The Adventures of Sabrina got canceled. So they didn't get the ending they wanted. It was a ending. But once again, I thought the creator had said, like, they he might have, like, gone about, like, maybe continuing in the form of a comic book. But this is kind of like that, um, what's the example I'd make? I guess, like, the DC stuff, like the Arrowverse stuff. Like, even though when a show is over, because it is that same universe, you can pull in certain continuities and be like, oh, this is what's happened, even though we had the show isn't around anymore. Like, obviously, last week we got Jefferson Pierce back um, after the events of all of Black Lightning type of situation. But another example would be, like, in the DC realm, it's like Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond was canceled, but you do get a conclusion to that story in the form of the Justice League Unlimited cartoon, which I don't remember that well, so I can't really remember how that all played out. But it's, it's, it's essentially in that sense. I think the same thing applies to Static Shock in that regard. It might just be Batman Beyond, but that's what they're doing. They're giving, not necessarily an ending, but letting you know that there is some, like, happy, sad endings because Sabrina had a happy, sad ending in certain regards. It's mainly sad because of the... But her and you, Nick found their way to each other, so there's happiness in that, but everyone that was still alive, there was sadness. But she just, like, said it herself, like, right, I died. She eventually came back. Because this is her at 20-something, so, like, it's been a couple years since the pseudo-ending of uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. So it gives you an end result while also potentially uh, leaving room open for you to... Like, fill in the gaps. Because I'm about to say, like, she has blonde hair. I kept pointing... I pointed that out. Instead of, like, her platinum hair. So I think that speaks volumes. Um, but, uh... It's just, like I said, a pseudo-ending. It's, yes, this is a different universe entirely. This, is, th this isn't even the same, like, oh, this is the same continuity. Because this is... She's from Greendale, not Greenvale. So, but it's still applicable of, like, in the multiverse of everything. It could be, like, no, like... Even in Greendale, like, the continuities of Riverdale and Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, this could still be a parallel of, like, it worked out like this in this universe. That means it can work out in this other universe. But it's just, like, this odd uni this other universe means this kind of what-if situation allows you to kind of pseudo-show, like, a happier ending for Sabrina. That everything works out. She comes back. I'm assuming her and Nick come back, and everything gets resolved. Once again... If the creator ever wants to continue things in a comic, the room is there, but we have some slight notion of the end result that there is some happy, maybe a happy, sad ending in that regard. But I just thought it was beautiful. And I'm just like, I was just so hyped about it. I was like, yeah, because I, I didn't, because I didn't, I don't, I didn't watch her trailer. So I didn't know the context of why she'd be in the show. Because I thought she'd be like, oh, regular Sabrina Spellman, not an actual witch. But no, she gets to be witch Sabrina. And like I said, it's pseudo kind of plays on the chilling adventures of Sabrina continuity. So all around, I thought it was kind of a beautiful result. But now it's like, yeah, Nana Rose in Cheryl's body and Sabrina are going to be teaching Britta kind of like you know, spells and stuff like that too, so.
and power of, you know, witchcraft. So it's like, it's, there, it's a beautiful, I think out of any of these stories, this is like the one with the happiest ending because everything else had like complications, you know, like nothing had like, none of the other stories had a happy ending except for this one. So I think it's beautiful that this one has a happy ending and especially, I think they probably roll it like that to it needing to have a happy ending because of the Sabrina element to it because you're like, right, we want things to be happy, especially if we're including uh, Sabrina and all of this, so, like, I, you know, and, and I think that line of, oh, nothing ever, like, dies, it just transforms, and it's like, yeah, like, that, it just, it leans into it a lot, like I said, it's being cheeky and coy, and I like it a lot, so, uh, I'm excited to see where the next episode takes us, it is the finale for this event, uh, this is a five-episode bit, much like the Armageddon situation in The Flash. So it's going to be interesting to see what this final story is, whether everything fully ties together or not, or, you know, what that story looks like. It's definitely going to be interesting to see uh, what ends up going down. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.